the story of the treasurer's son who married a female acrobat. The story goes that during the time of the Buddhist dispensation, there was a large troop of tumblers and acrobats who toured the country displaying their skills for all the people. Once or twice a year, they visited Rajagaha to perform for the king. People came from many miles to watch them, and they earned large sums of money in gold. One day, a certain female tumbler climbed a pole and turned somersaults at the top, and danced and sang as if she trod on the air. She was a wonder to behold, and one particular young man, the treasurer's son, Ugasena, fell in love with her and returned to his household, declaring he could not live without her. The mother and father had not planned for someone like this to marry their son, and the father of the girl was equal unsure of the wisdom of the match. But the young man was insistent and said he would die if he could not be with her. The father of the girl laid down the condition that if Ugasina could join them and live as they did, only then would the marriage be considered. And this is what he did. Having travelled with them for some time, the young man got married to the young woman, and within a year she had a son. She played with the son during the day as they went from place to place. She addressed her son as son of a car driver, or son of a fetcher of wood and drawer of water, and even son of a know-nothing, because her husband did the menial task that supported the performers as they went from place to place. The husband realised she was referring to him. Because she was wealthy in her own right from the money she earned, she had no fear of him leaving her. So he decided to earn her respect and went to his father-in-law to learn how to be an acrobat. He learned all the skills and feats that the father-in-law could teach and the wife, impressed by his dedication, resolved that whatever future estate her husband attained, she would also strive to attain it. Ukasina exhibited his arts in the towns and villages throughout the land and finally came back to Rajagaha. There he sent out a proclamation that in seven days he would put on a show for all the people in the city. On that day the Buddha surveyed the world at dawn and perceived that Ugasena had come within his net of knowledge. He saw that if Ugasena was performing his feats and a certain stanza was pronounced, Ugasena would attain complete enlightenment and thousands of others would gain comprehension of the Dharma. So on the day that Ugasena was due to perform his exhibition, the Buddha and his assembly of monks set out for Rajagaha. Ugasena climbed to the top of the tall pole and having performed some preliminary feats, then bade the crowd to pay full attention. He rose into the air and turned seven somersaults and landed back onto the top of the pole with perfect poise. But the moment he had risen into the air, the Buddha had entered the city and caused the crowd to turn to look at him. So when Ugasena landed, he realised that not one person had seen his feet because all were looking away from him in the direction of the teacher. He thought, I have spent a year perfecting this feat, but when the teacher enters the city, the audience looks at the teacher and not at me. My exhibition has completely failed. The Buddha then sent the elder Moglana to speak to Ugasena. Moglana said to Ugasena, the teacher desires you to exhibit your skill. Ugasena was delighted, so he balanced once more on the top of the pole and leapt into the air, this time turning 14 somersaults and lighting on his feet once more, balancing on the top of the pole. The teacher said to him, Ugasena, a man that is wise should put away attachment for the elements of being in the past, the present and the future. Even so, he should win release from birth, old age, disease and death. So saying, he pronounced the following stanza. Give up things of the future. Give up things of the past. Give up things of the present. Cross to the farther shore. If your heart is freed from every attachment, you will no more undergo birth and old age. Even as he stood there at the conclusion of the lesson, 
Ugasena attained arahatship together with the higher powers, and 84,000 beings attained comprehension of the Dharma. Ugasena descended from the pole and paid respect to the Buddha and requested to be admitted into his order of monks. The teacher admitted him with the words, Come, monk. In that instant, Ugasena was transformed into an elder of sixty with all the requisites of a monk. The other monks had seen Ugasena descend from the pole that was so high and asked whether he was not afraid. Ugasena replied, Brethren, I have no fear. The monks reported the remarks to the Buddha, saying that he must be speaking of falsehood. The teacher replied, Monks, those monks who, like my son Ugasena, have severed attachments, have no fear. So saying, he pronounced the following stanza. He that has severed every attachment, he trembles not. He that is past the bonds and is unshackled, such a man I call a Brahmin. And so it was that the wife, marvelling at her husband's transformation, and having previously determined that she would strive to attain any new state her husband achieved, retired from the world, and after a short while, she too became established in Arahatship. A few days later, the monks were gathered in the Hall of Truth, and began a discussion about the treasurer's son, Ugasena. They approached the Buddha and asked how it could be that a monk endowed with the faculties requisite for the attainment of arahatship could have travelled about with a troop of tumblers for the sake of a tumbler's daughter. The Buddha replied that both these things came about as a result of one and the same circumstance, and with that he related this story of the past. The story goes that a long, long time ago, while the golden shrine of the Buddha Kasapa was being constructed, many well-to-do and respectable families loaded up their carts with food and offerings and travelled from Benares to do the work of labourers. On the way there, a certain young couple saw an elder enter the city. The young wife said that since they had an abundance of provisions, they should stop and offer the elder some food. So they approached the elder, and the husband took his bowl, and they filled it with hard and soft food, and with reverence placed the bowl in his hands, and both made this earnest wish. Reverend Sir, may we be partakers of the truth that you have seen. Now this elder was an arahat, and so looked into the future to see if their earnest wish would be fulfilled. He perceived that they had accumulated much merit in this life, but also countless other lives, and seeing that, as a result, their wish would be fulfilled, he smiled. The woman noticed the smile and said to her husband, Husband, our noble elder smiled. He must be some kind of actor. And the husband replied, He must indeed, my dear wife. And so they passed on and went their way. This was the deed from their former life, and so, living out the rest of their lives in that existence, they were reborn in a heavenly realm where they remained for a very long time indeed. Having lived out their allotted term, they were reborn in the dispensation of the present Buddha. Because the woman said, the elder must be some kind of actor, she was reborn in a family of tumblers and performers, and because the husband had said he must be dear wife, although born as the son of a treasurer, he felt compelled to travel around with actors and performers. But through their past good karma, their earnest wish was fulfilled, and they both partook of the truth that had been seen. <laughs>